we come to this new video in which we're going to apply the derivative to marginal analysis. So we have a price P in dollars and a demand X for a particular steam iron related by the equation X equals 1000 minus 20 P. The first question is express the price P in terms of the demand X and find the domain of this function. So let's start. Here, we're going to try to find P as a function of X. We have an equation in which we have x as a function of p. So let's write it. x equals 1000 minus 20p. And the question is, find p as a function of x. So we're going to manage this equation to get p. And here, we can move the negative 20p here to the left side and the x to the right side. OK? So we're going to obtain. 20p equals 1000 minus x. Then to get p, you just need to divide by 20. So p equals 1000 minus x over 20. OK, so this is the first part of the question. The second part is find the domain of this function. It means find the possible inputs for this function p as a function of x so what are the possible values of x remember that x is a quantity it's the demand so the demand is always positive x is a quantity so it's always greater or equal to zero because the quantity may be equal to zero okay then here by setting this condition we have a lower limit for our inputs. It means that the x must be greater or equal to zero. To find the upper limit of this, of the quantity, we have to check p. p is the price, and it's also, it's also greater than zero. To be consistent, we don't put equal to zero, because if the price is equal to zero, it means that you're going to sell your your goods for free and it's not really logic. So P is the price, so it's greater than zero. And we're going to write that 1000 minus, minus X over 20 greater than zero. We'll find the upper limit for our domain. So let's write it 1000 minus X over 20 greater than zero, which means that your numerator 1000 minus X is greater than zero because the denominator is 20, which is already greater than zero, okay? So, which means that x is less than 1,000. And here you found your upper limit. So, by checking your lower limit, which is x greater than zero, and the upper limit, you have your domain. So, the domain of your function is the interval. 0, 1,000. Open at 1,000. Okay? Now, let's move to the second question, which is find the revenue R of X from the sale of X steam irons, and what is the domain of R? First of all, let's write that the revenue is always equals to the quantity times the price. The quantity is X, the price is P, and we have the expression of P, so let's Substitute P by its expression, which is 1000 minus X over 20. Okay, so the revenue R of X is equal to 1000 X minus X squared over 20. Now, what is the domain of R? Of course, because R is involving the quantity x and the price p, it will inherit its domain from the price demand domain. So the domain of R will be the same as the price domain, which is 0, 1,000. Next question. The next question is about the marginal revenue. And keep in mind that when you see the word marginal, think about the derivative. So the word marginal is equivalent to 
the derivative. And in marginal analysis, we have we have an approximation which says that a marginal quantity, it means f prime of a at the point a, is approximately equal to f of a plus one minus f of a. This is the marginal analysis rule. Now, the question is, find the marginal revenue at the production level of 400 steam irons and interpret the results. First of all, we have to find the marginal revenue. And we said the marginal revenue is simply the derivative of the revenue. So let's compute r prime of x. Remember that r of x is 1000x. So let's rewrite r of x first. r of x is 1000x minus x squared obtained in the previous question over 20. Now to compute r prime of x, you apply the power rule. So r prime of x is equal to 1000. The derivative of x is 1 minus the derivative of x squared, which is 2x over the constant 20. Okay, so this is the derivative of r. And here in the question, find the marginal revenue at a production level of 400 steam irons. So the x is equal to 400. So we're going to compute r prime of 400, which is equal to 1,000 minus 2 times 400. It means 800 over 20. 1,000 minus 800, 200. Over 20, it gives 10 and the units is dollars per unit, per steam iron. Now, what is the interpretation of this, uh, of this result? Since the marginal revenue is approximately equal, so if we want to write this, we're going to write that R prime of 400 is approximately equal to R of 401 minus R of 400, just applying the marginal analysis equality, okay? So what is this? It's approximately the revenue generated by the production of the 400 first steam iron. It's not the revenue generated by one steam iron, no. It's the difference between the revenue generated by 401 steam irons and 400 steam irons. So it's the interpretation is that at the production level, at the production level of 400 steam irons, producing one more unit will generate a revenue of ten dollars. Okay, so producing one more unit will generate or increase the revenue by ten dollars. Since it's positive, so it's an increase. Okay, revenue by dollars. So this is the interpretation of our result. Okay? Now, next question. Find the marginal revenue at the production level of 650 steam irons and interpret the results. Again, here we're going to compute R prime of 650. Remember that R prime of X is 1000 minus 2X the x here is 650, so 2x is 1,300 over 20. And the result here is negative. It's negative $15 per unit. Okay? Now, what is the interpretation of this result? It means that if we move from 650 steam irons to 651 steam irons, we're going to lose minus, we're going to lose $15 for the revenue, okay? So, 
let's write that at the production level of six hundred fifty steam irons. producing one more unit will decrease the revenue by fifteen dollars. Okay? Will decrease the revenue by fifteen dollars. We don't need to put the minus sign since we said it will decrease the revenue by fifteen dollars. Thank you for your attention, guys, and see you in the next videos.